Cuphead is not the most popular thing in the world, but its fan base is well knit and full of good people. With Cuphead garnering what could be called a cult following since its inception, there is no surprise that its fans would form potential connective tissue in the form of theories. Even big names in the theory world like Game Theory have touched on Cuphead, so we have to ask, which of these theories may as well be canon and what should be piled onto the BS pile? I'm Caleb with Wicked Binge, and this is Cuphead Fan Theories BS to Truth Bombs. Just as a note, these theories will feature information from the game and the show, but because they are two different canonicities, we will be specifying which medium we are talking about. Secondly, spoilers for the delicious last course and the first season of the Cuphead show are going to be talked about, so if you don't want to be spoiled, click off now. Finally, we want to make it clear we are by no means the creators or lore masters of this series, and there is a possibility something we say about a theory is untrue. We're also not calling a person bad or stupid if we deem their theory BS, we just don't think it holds up. So we'll be starting with the theories that just don't hold up. Due to a lack of evidence, sheer unprobability, or they've been debunked by the creators. These theories are bull****. Chalice has an eldritch goddess form. The legendary Chalice is one of the most major characters in the game, giving the Cup Brothers special abilities that they can use against the many debtors. She became playable in the Delicious Last Course as Miss Chalice and became quite popular. Redditor Celery Zealous Ideal 95 has put forth the theory that Chalice actually has an eldritch goddess form. They don't explain anything beyond this, and we see no evidence of this claim. Now being a ghostly apparition of an ancient woman who may or may not be connected to an ancient chalice-like warrior, it may have some sort of basis. But as far as we can tell, there is no evidence for this, hence why we place it here. Cuphead takes place in an alternate universe for Supernatural. A theory posted by Flashy Programmer 221 is that Cuphead takes place in an alternate world of Supernatural, and even goes as far as to place the characters, with Cuphead as Dean, Mugman as Sam, and Chalice as Castile. Now as much as we love Supernatural and we find theories like this a lot of fun, we have to call BS. There is just no evidence beyond a cursory look at similar stylings between the two. Yes, Cuphead is the feisty older brother, and Mugman is the smarter, more well-rounded younger brother, and they do make friends with a high-ranking entity that may or may not have very strong religious connections. But beyond that, the theory falls flat. Cuphead doesn't share Dean's personality, and Mugman is not nearly as brave or smart as Sam. This ends now! Chalice does have some similarities to Castile, but even those are superficial. So no hate to the Redditor, but we can't in good conscience call this anything but BS. Not BS, but still unlikely to be confirmed true or still lacking a lot of evidence, we move on to our next category. These theories are full of holes. The cups were descended from the legendary Chalice. A pretty in-depth theory from NoHost8003 on Reddit puts forward that the Cups are descended from a special group of warriors known as the Calyx Amini, specifically from the legendary Chalice. This is supposed to explain why Elder Kettle has the potion he gives to the boys and the statues of the Chalice in the mission Rugged Ridge. The potion was created to give the user powers similar to the ones they already possess, and was passed down generation by generation until it got to Cuphead and Mugman. Now, while this theory is definitely entertaining and very interesting, it has a lot of holes we need to discuss. Chalice seems to have no idea who the Cuffs are, although she does seem to recognize enough power in them to give them the super arts. We have no idea how long Chalice has been in the astral plane and if she even died the regular way, or why statues of someone similar to her and Elder Kettle are in Rugged Ridge. This theory makes a lot of leaps in logic about certain aspects of lore we have no inkling about. Drawing mostly from Elder Kettle's potion and the phrase Calyx Amon, 
Company in Rugged Ridge, a Latin phrase that roughly translates to cup of the soul or sold cup. We can also confirm that this doesn't seem to be the case in the Cuphead show, because Chalice seems to be a normal person with some sort of ghostly powers rather than an ancient spirit. While this theory is interesting and worth thinking about, we just don't see enough evidence to place it anywhere else. The Howling Aces Cat is related to the Katzenwagen. A theory put forth by Redditor, This Sweet 2086 says that Katzenwagen, the cat that Werner Worman drives during Marine Corps, is either stolen by the Howling Aces for their fight or the cats are related. Now, what they're referring to is in the Howling Aces fight, the Bulldog will use a cat-like rocket launcher to shoot yarn balls at the Cop Brothers. Now, there's a few holes in this theory that at least to us, kind of makes us think this is unlikely. Firstly, yes, the cats do look very similar, we won't be denying that. But something 1930s animation is known for is reusing everything they can, whether it be walk cycles or the same few frames of movement for the mouth. So it wouldn't be a surprise if they reused this cat design to make things easier. Secondly, while we don't know how it works regarding the shifting of sizes, if Cuphead and Mugman stay a consistent size as it seems to be implied, Kotzenwagen is huge and the cat is of regular size. Thirdly, Kotzenwagen is mechanical and controlled by Werner, meaning it is unlikely that the Howling Aces could use it, especially considering what seems to be the distance between aisles 3 and 4. Finally, we don't ever see Kotzenwagen shoot out yarn balls, which doesn't leave this theory dead in the water, but it does poke a small hole. Whether the evidence is compelling or the leaps in logic aren't as far-fetched as to be believed, we move into the theories we see as probable. Pork fought the devil before. A theory and headcanon put forth by Sea Salt Strawberry is that Porkrind, the shop-owning hog, has not only dealt with the devil himself, hence his eye patch, but has also helped others in their fights with the devil. This is said to explain why he carries the various potions. Almost every single person on the aisles knows the devil and his contracts, and it's implied that many of them have dealt with the devil in some way. They also mention that the coffee charm he sells might be the reason so many people know how to parry. All of this evidence is basically just leaps in logic, although these leaps make sense for the most part. The coffee charm bit is a bit too far of a leap. It could just be something many people have internalized, and with Chalice not parry slapping with the cups and instead parry dashing, that means there's likely more than one way to parry. We can't say for sure where Porkrine got his eye patch from, and it could be from literally anything else. But the leaps here make enough sense we don't feel the need to berate this theory too much. Salt Baker exists and is good in the Cuphead show. Not put forward by anyone specifically, but this theory postulates that Chef Saltbaker from The Delicious Last Course exists in the universe of the Cuphead show. Not only this, but unlike his game counterpart, he's actually a good guy for the most part. This theory mostly stems from Miss Chalice appearing in the show. In the universe of the game, this can only happen when the legendary Chalice eats one of his astral treats. Now, we don't ever see Saltbaker during the show, and with the new season on the horizon, it's definitely possible that he makes an appearance. Or we may find out the opposite. He appears and is evil. It's also quite likely that Chalice just has the ability to shift without any trees, which seems to be the case, but we won't be sure until the second season airs. So while the leap in logic makes sense, we can only place it here because of a general lack of evidence. The cups are moonshiners. Rounding out this section is a theory from the ever-popular YouTube channel, The Game Theorists. This theory puts forward the idea that Cuphead, Mugman, and Elder Kettle are actually running an illegal moonshine business. This theory has a lot of leaps in logic that make sense. The Cup family are all instruments known to be used by moonshiners. They live in the middle of nowhere next to a water source like many moonshiners, and the liquid in their head doesn't seem to be anything specific, although Cuphead does use a stereotypical moonshine bottle to fill himself. They also mentioned that Mugman drinks from his head to get ready for battle, much like someone would drink alcohol to get ready for a fight. 
While this theory is very interesting and makes sense on an intrinsic level, it sort of falls flat with more modern information. This theory was created back in 2017 when Cuphead first came out, and considering how long it's been, more info has come out. Firstly, we know what's in the cups, but we won't be mentioning it until later and you'll see why. But it's not alcohol. Plus, we do actually meet moonshiners, specifically the Moonshine Mob in Inkwell Isle 4, and there's no mention of the cups being Moonshiners from them. In fact, we can say it's full of holes because it's still very intriguing and could very well say it's true, but it doesn't seem to be the case. Close to true, whether they have very compelling evidence or are just a very likely conclusion to be drawn from what we have, these theories are possible. Briny Beard's crew used to work in Perilous Piers. A theory from Zoology Tome on Reddit puts forth the idea that the multiple sea creatures that Captain Brinybeard uses during his fight are outcasts from the enemies in Perilous Piers. Now, this stems from the fact that both missions utilize sea life, with Brinybeard specifically using them for his attacks and Perilous Piers having them as obstacles to overcome. The interesting thing is that between the two missions, no sea animal is shared between the two missions, and the animals in Brinybeard's crew all all seem to be injured and angry creatures. Another notable thing is that the dogfish all wear collars like they were tamed by a human, whilst the animals in Perilous Piers don't wear clothes save for the lobster's hat. The theory's evidence is actually quite interesting, with the shark and dogfish's designs being evidence that they're at the very least experienced in battle. Now, this theory makes no mention of Brinybeard's squid, but we assume they would fall in as well. The only issue with this theory is a lack of any rock-hard evidence. But these assumptions make a lot of sense, and it wouldn't surprise us if it turned out true. Elder Kettle fought the devil. Coming from Redditor Break the Fifth Wall comes a theory that suggests the Elder Kettle once fought the devil. Now, we could consider this a follow-up of sorts to the earlier pork rind theory as it uses a similar basis. Elder Kettle has a lot of knowledge in fighting, considering the tutorial is contained on his desk. He provides the magic potion that gives the cups their first weapon, he knows the debtors will turn into horrible beasts, and he knows the devil will give the cups a moral choice that they need to do the right thing, which implies he has faced the devil's tricks before. This theory does have a lot of truth to it. Everything mentioned in the theory does make sense and shows that Kettle knows more than he shows. The potion and inkwell tutorial are never explained, and Kettle does seem to know the devil's tricks quite well. Now, something worth mentioning, and the Redditor brings it up as well, is that this is not the case in the show, because in the show, the devil seems to have no knowledge of the kettle. But as for the game version, we think this theory is great, it just doesn't have confirmation. Esther works with the Moonshine Mob. The Redditor Acrobatic Tennis 1312 brings forth a small theory that Esther Winchester, the supposed sheriff and bar owner in Inkwell Isle 4, is working with or for the Moonshine Mob. The evidence put forward for this theory is small, but all of it makes shocking sense. Not only do the two bosses live shockingly close together, the Esther fight unlocking quite quickly after beating the mob, but Esther carries Triple X Moonshine, which as we can assume based on the time the game is replicating, is illegal, and can only be obtained through Moonshiners like the mob. The Redditor also assumes this is why the mob was never caught, despite assumedly running for quite a while. Now, while the evidence is not as extensive as other theories, this explains a lot with how close a sheriff and a criminal gang are, and the mob has never been caught until the cops come around, it's likely the two were in business. Plus, corruption was a common thing in the time the Cuphead series takes place, so it wouldn't be too surprising. The only reason why we can't say this is a truth bomb is a lack of confirmation, and it's still mostly leaps in logic since we never see the two interact. Whether they've been confirmed by the creators, were canonized later on, or just extremely likely, these theories are truth bombs. The Cuphead Multiverse 
Like any series worth its salt, the Cuphead fandom has put forward the theory that Cuphead takes place in some sort of multiverse. With the multiverse as compelling as a theory as it's ever been, this theory tries to explain the many differences between Cuphead and the Cuphead show. Whether those be about Miss Chalice and her massive differences, the Elder Kettle's wartime, or the fact that Cuphead and Mugman seem younger in the show than the game. This would also explain the reason why King Dice seems to have a much smaller role and why the devil doesn't seem to run a casino of any kind. Now, while this hasn't been confirmed by the creators, this is by far the easiest and simplest explanation for the mountain of differences between the show and the game. Even small all character actions and relationships seem massively different between the two universes. And this would explain it all. The liquid is the cup's soul. A theory that was put forward when the game was first coming out tackles the mysterious creamy white fluid in the head of Cuphead and Mugman. Many theories mention that it could be milk or water or moonshine, as we mentioned earlier. But this theory put forward the idea that it may actually be the life force of the cups. This would explain why it seems like it spills when you're hit and why it seems to evaporate on death. The thing about this is it was confirmed by the creators that the liquid that inhabits their head is actually a manifestation of the soul of these cups. So when the spirit starts to float away on death, that's actually the liquid leaving. This explains so much about the mystery of the liquid, hence why we call it a truth bomb. Dijimi is stronger than the devil himself. Put forward by No Practice 8826 is that Dijimi the Great is stronger than the devil, King Dice, and Chef Saltbaker. Now, we've talked about this idea before, but the evidence they put forward is quite compelling, because not only is he a genie capable of granting any wish he wants, he is capable of granting extra life to the Cup Brothers when wanted, and is even capable of opening and controlling the astral plane without the need of an artifact like Saltbaker. The only knock against this theory is that Dejimi owes his soul to the devil, so we have to assume he did that for fun or some other thing, because there would be no reason for him to owe that if he were stronger. But everything in this series seems to imply that not only is he stronger than them, but he is the strongest character in the series. But let us know in the comment section if you agree with our ranking, and tell us what we should cover next. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge more of our videos. But most importantly, stay wicked.